Today, we're going to be taking a look at the free version of the Formulator plugin for WordPress. Now, this plugin has a ton of really useful options, a really powerful form builder. But specifically today, we're going to check out how we can create a sign up form and also how we can create a login form for WordPress. So let's just jump over, take a look at how we can get started building those forms. As you can see, this has got over 100,000 active installs, regularly updated and comes back with a lot of five star reviews. So it's a great option for no cost. Let's go ahead and install this, then activate it. And finally, just open up the Formulator panel. So this is where we can get started with Formulator. So what we're going to do is create our first form. This gives us the option now to choose what type of template to use. For this example, we're going to start off with the registration form. We we'll choose registration and click continue. This template allows you to create your own registration form and insert it into a custom page. It doesn't modify the default registration form. This is something we need to be aware of so we can set up any kind of redirections later. We we'll click on create and this takes us into the ability now to create, edit and work through all the different stages to set up our form. So let's just take a moment to take a quick look at what options are available before we start moving on and creating our form. If we look on the left hand side, we've got all the different stages to create, set up and configure the form the way that we want to. If we take a look at the main section, this is where we can see all the existing fields. If we're using a template, we can insert new fields, or if we're starting from scratch, we can insert fields one at a time to get everything set up exactly how we want. Now for my sign up form, I want to add in just a little bit more personalization. So we're going to ask for their forename and their surname. We're going to choose the option to insert fields, and then we can choose from a range of different field types, names, emails, phone numbers, and so on. You can also apply GDPR approval if you need to use that in your forms. And you can also set things up like Stripe and PayPal if you wanted to have some form of payment option during the registration process. For this example, we're going to choose the name option and we'll say insert fields. This now takes us into the options to configure exactly how that field is going to work. At the moment, it's set to single, but we can choose multiple. If we do that, because it's a name field, it's going to ask us what of the name field information do we want to use? Things like our prefix, first name, and so on. We'll disable prefix and we'll disable middle name to keep it really simple. You can expand these and you can see we have more options, including customization, so we can set up exactly what label or placeholder or description that we want. Let's just close that down and take a look now at the settings option. Inside here, we can set things up for the first name and the last name or any other options we may have included. And you can see we can set these to be required or optional. We're going to set them to be optional so people can use their first name and their surname if they want to, but it's not required. You can also pre-populate this with query information. That's a little bit more in depth than we need in this tutorial, but the option is there should you need it. You can also do exactly the same then for the last name. And if you've included things like prefixes and middle names, you'll have the same options available for those as well. Hopping over to styling, and this is where we can add additional CSS classes. So if you want to add in your own custom CSS to style this exactly the way that you want, you can apply a class here for this particular field, and then you can assign any kind of CSS styling you want to that particular class. Finally, we have visibility. And this is where we can set up any kind of conditions and rules we want to show or hide the field that we have selected. As you can see, there's lots of different options. We can choose to add a rule and we can set up various different kinds of rule types. However, as this is a normal registration form for WordPress, we don't really need to worry about this. So we're going to remove it and we're just going to hit apply. That's our new field added in. As you can see, though, it's at the bottom, which isn't the best place for this. So we can simply drag that up into position exactly where we want it. And that now makes a lot more sense. If you want to make any changes to any of these, you can simply come out to the cog on the right hand side, click, and then you can choose to edit the field, duplicate it to speed up the process of creating new fields, or you can delete it. If we click edit field, you can see it takes us back into exactly the same set of options we've just seen. Before we move on, just to make sure that we save all the changes, let's just save the draft just to make sure we've committed all those changes we've just made. So let's move over to the appearance tab now where we can make some changes to the design and apply colors and things like that if we need to. If we take a look, you can see we've got a range of different styles we can choose from and a preview window underneath it. So we choose something like flat, that will show us what it looks like there, bold, material, or none at all. We'll set this to default and leave it as it is. You can also use custom colors or default colors. If we choose custom, you can see we can change all the colors for all the key elements for our form. Lots of great options inside there. Let's use the default colors. And the same goes for the theme fonts. We can customize those or use them as they are. So lots of great options inside here to customize things, or we can actually delve deeper, enable custom CSS, and then we can get stuck in and start attaching custom CSS to any of our form elements. 
Again, let's just disable that for now. Let's hop over to the user registration option. And inside there, we can now go ahead and map all the fields to the relevant WordPress fields to make sure that everything connects and works flawlessly. So let's go ahead and connect our email, make sure that's all connected correctly. You can see that's fine. Our custom fields we just added in though, for first name and last name, they're not connected. So what we're gonna do is choose first name and last name. Now all the other fields that we need are already mapped for us. Let's scroll down and now we can set up any user role we want to assign to our new subscriber or a new sign up. As you can see, subscriber is set as default, but we can, if we want to, use any of the other options that are available so we can have signups assigned to anything that we choose. You can also assign those conditionally, but again, we're going to leave those as they are. This is just a normal WordPress signup form. If you want to add custom metadata, you can do that. You also then have various different methods for user account activation. So default will use the normal WordPress default option. However, we can use email activation if we want to as well. And this allows us to ensure that the email is sent out to the new signup and they have to confirm before they actually fully signed up. You can also send them to a confirmation page. So you can choose whatever page you want, create a new page and set that up to be the confirmation after the email activation is sent. You can also apply manual approval. And this is great if you have restricted sites that you want to ensure that any signup has been confirmed before they actually allow access. We'll leave this as default for now. If you're using an activation email, you can set the default inside there or you can set none. It's entirely up to you how you want to work. Then you've got additional settings. I like to have my users automatically logged in once they've been approved and set up. I'm going to choose the option to automatically log in newly activated users. You can also choose whether you want to hide the form if the user is already logged in, and you can also assign a custom message inside here. Great if you want to make sure that nobody gets confused after they've gone ahead, signed up, and then they try to log in again. Moving over to the behavior tab, we can now set up all the behaviors for what happens after submission. So you can see after submission, you can have an inline message to tell them that they were successful, and you can also have a link to their login. You can redirect the user to a specific URL if you want to, or you can hide the form entirely and just show this message. We'll leave this set to inline message. And you can see we can also set it to auto close the success message after a certain period of time. We're gonna leave all the other options as they are because they're all perfectly fine for what we want. It's up to you if you want to configure any additional options. Hopping over to email notifications, we can now configure and confirm exactly what the email contains and who it's sent to. So you can see this allows us to choose who the admin email address is and the confirmation email itself and where that gets sent. If we open it up, you can see we have a range of options. We can send the label, the subject. We can configure exactly what's going to be included in the body. We can choose who the recipient is, any email routing you might want to assign and any rules associated with it. If we go to advanced, you can see we can set up the from, the form email, the reply to, CC and so on. So if you wanted to CC in any admin for the site on a new signup, you could do that inside here. And once again, we have conditions for when this is going to be sent. Pretty cool to see we have all these in the free version. Let's just click on cancel and we leave all the default options inside there. Hop over into integrations. If you want to connect this up to various different integrations, and there are quite a lot of integrations, things like MailChimp, Zapier, all those kinds of things, you can connect those up inside here as well through the integrations page. And then when someone signs up, you can connect that up. So you may want to send out an automated email via MailChimp. You could do that by linking things to the integrations and then having them automatically subscribed to your mailing list. Finally, we have settings. So inside here, you can see we've got some final options. Do we want to store the data? Now, this is relevant more so for other kind of form elements, not so much for a sign up, but you have those options inside you should you want to use them. We're going to leave all these options as they are, and we're going to simply hit save draft. Once you've saved our draft, we're going to go ahead and take a preview of this to see exactly what everything looks like. So this is what our form looks like. As you can see, it's pretty plain and simple. However, we can customize that through the CSS options if we want to, or we can use a page builder like Elementor and apply additional options inside there for our design to ensure that everything is perfectly styled. Okay, so now that we're happy with the way everything looks, we're simply gonna hit publish, and that's now published and becomes available so we can embed that into our site any way we want. And like I say, we can also use things like page builders, like Elementor, if we want to use those and use the built-in widgets inside there. Now that we've seen how to create the registration form using Forminator, let's just jump over and take a look at how we can take those skills we just learned and start working on building that login form. So let's go ahead and click on create one more time. And this time we're gonna choose the option for login. Click continue. User login is perfectly fine for the name and we'll click on create. 
Now we've created our form, you can see we're back into what we saw when we created the new sign up form and everything works in pretty much the same way. However, we don't really need to add in any extra fields. We can go with exactly what's included, just the username, email address and the password option. We hop over to appearance, we can set our appearance inside here to make sure that everything is consistent across all of our different styling. Hopping into user login, you can see this is now where we can map any of our custom fields if we've created any or any of the fields that we need to map into the normal WordPress fields. However, you can see the username and password are automatically being created and linked through so everything is set up perfectly fine. We do have an additional option though because we're working with a login form as opposed to registration. We now have the ability to show or hide the remember me field and also we can apply a different label to this, how long the cookie will actually last for and all those other great options. And again, we have some additional settings to hide this form if the user is already logged in, which makes a lot more sense. Again, we have the behavior option, the email notifications, the integrations should we need those and the settings finally. And again, we can come in and set anything we need inside here. For our example though, we're gonna leave everything as it is and we're simply gonna hit on publish. So now that's our form published, we've got the short code there ready to start embedding these into our design. So now we've seen how to create the forms, how do we go about actually inserting those into our designs? Well, we're going to be sticking with Gutenberg for this, but you can use multiple different kinds of page builders if you want to use that kind of method. But in this example, Gutenberg is what we're going to be using. Let's go ahead and create our new registration page. So we'll give this a title. And we're going to come to our blocks and we're going to do a search for, first of all, a container so we can contain our form. And then we're going to add our new form element. Choose our form element and select the form that we want, which is the user registration form. And there's our new form inserted into our page. All we need to do is publish this page and we've now created our registration page. We can now do exactly the same to create our login page. Add new, call this login add our new container, and finally add our form element, and then choose our user login. There's our login page then, publish. We've now created our custom login and our custom registration pages with the Formulator plugin. Okay, so with a couple of little tweaks on how things look, we take a look in our preview, preview this in a new tab, we can see exactly what this is gonna look like. And there's our new custom login page. We can do the same thing for our registration page. Let's just take a look at that. And there's our custom registration page all set up the way you want. All we need to do now is link this into our design and we are good to go with our custom login and our custom sign up pages. So now that we've seen how to take Forminator and how we can start to create custom registration and login pages, if you'd like to see more about creating these kinds of custom pages with different tools, well check out these videos next. They're gonna give you a ton of useful info. As always, all the links are in the description below so you can check those out. And if you enjoyed the video and got value from it, why not give it a thumbs up? If you didn't though, well hit the thumbs down twice as that seems to work too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.